Good morning, eighth grade. Um, did you about blow away yesterday? Uh, it was a little windy, but um, not too bad. I hope you're all uh, uh, still intact and together. Uh, today, we're starting our last light unit. Um, yeah, how'd you make out the test yesterday? Everybody make 100? I, I sure hope so. Well, you bring them back this weekend and we will um, find out what you did. Yeah, I, um, I I looked at today's lesson. If there was ever a time I wish you were here in class, this would be a fun lesson to do in class. Now, I'm going to ask you some of these questions, and um, and we're going to go over them. Uh, I I'm not going to put anything on the board hardly. Uh, I will basically just talk about the lesson. Um, I need and I want. And this last the book has got to do a lot of just practical math, just everyday things that we use all the time. Um, let me tell you, I, I have a little son at home, and he's just learning how to, to use words. And he's, he's almost two. He'll be two this week, really. And, um, and he's got this phrase that we all laugh about. He, he, he says, I need, <laughs> and then you never know what he needs. He needs a bottle, and he needs a toy, and he needs a drink. Well, his needs are unending. It's just everything. When he wants to tell you something, I don't think he understands what the meaning actually is. It's just the way he communicates his things, and it's, I need this and I need that. And so I thought that fit pretty good here. He needs a lot of things. Some things he don't need, but he tells you I need this. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he even tells you, believe it or not, he needs candy. You know? He needs candy. That's the way it is with humans. Um, on, first, on the first page of recognizing our wants and our needs, um, you look down through there and he talks about how that, that companies and advertisements and all those things, they are promoting something that you need. And if you don't have it, you're missing out. That's not true. That's not true. The sooner you learn that in life, the happier you will be, the richer you will be, and the more content you will be. Advertisements are simply to get you to buy and to benefit the company's pocket and to drain yours. Okay? I don't know how many times I have been hooked or I have got my leg pulled on the needs and wants. Um, you know, uh, right now, I need food, clothing, and it's nice to have shelter. But you know what? There are people in this world that don't have a house, they don't have food, and they probably don't hardly have any clothes that we would class fit to wear. So what do I need? <sighs> Not as much as I think I did. The rest of the categories all fall under I want. Now this is a sermon, okay? Even though it's math class, even though it's, 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 it, 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 it's today's lesson. Uh, it is a, a, a part of life that you eighth graders are going to face head on here in a couple years. And you will continue to face it. Well, I don't know. I'm almost 50. I faced it before. Oh, I still face it today. I need and I want are two things that we need to separate. And remember, most of those things I want in the world we live in. And I don't need them. I don't need them. Contentment. Contentment is found 
in being happy with what I have, not what I want. Ooh. Look down on page two, about halfway page. Now you have to read this, okay? Please understand me. Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Look at that. The Bible says food and raiment, be happy if you have those. Is anybody hung? Are you hungry this morning? Oh, you are? Well, did you have breakfast? Well, did you ask mom for breakfast? Did she put breakfast out? You say, I don't like that breakfast. Um, yeah. Do you have any clothes to wear? Well, definitely, yes. I know all of you have plenty to eat and plenty to wear. Be content. Now, uh, would you want some other things? Yeah. Don't use the term my little boy does. So don't say, I need those mom. I need those dad. Uh, spend money. I'm good. Okay, I'm at the black word that says good money attitudes versus poor money attitudes. Spending money to help others versus spending money only for yourself. I don't do well in this. I don't do well in this. But spending money to, to, to help others is always of greater value than spending it for yourself. Being willing to work for money versus expecting to receive money you haven't earned. Okay, now I don't know much about this because I know that for me to, to get something, I need to work for it. But you, hmm, uh, maybe you've bought your breakfast or maybe you bought your lunch, but probably someone else did. And maybe you are starting to buy some of your clothes. Oh, great if you are. I'm glad your mom and dads are making you. Um, I bet at least some of your clothes and dresses and shirts and pants and shoes and stuff, uh, someone else has bought, I'm guessing. That's getting ready to change. Or I hope it does anyhow. I hope they don't keep buying, your parents don't keep buying stuff for you. You will need to do that. Next is spend within your budget versus buying whatever you want whenever you want it. Now this is a key point that Americans don't understand. We Mennonites don't either. I want it and I want it now. Do I have the money? No, I don't. So guess what I do? I go borrow it. I'm not against borrowing money. I, I have borrowed money in the past. And I may need to borrow money in the future again. I don't want to. Spend within your budget. You know what? And I've preached you this sermon, but I'm going to preach it again. Would you like to have a car someday? Would you like to have a, a, um, a house? Well, start saving money now for it. Would you like to have something, a ball? or a bow, or a gun. Uh, let's see, what do girls want? Purses, and uh, what, what do girls like? I don't know what girls like. Maybe they like cars too, maybe they like, I don't know, I can just tell you what all boys like. I mean, bicycles, motorcycles, four wheelers, all those things they need. Well, it's a big question whether they need them or not. Uh, start saving money in advance. Start making payments beforehand. And then as that money adds up and you have the ability to buy something you really need, then use that money you saved. If you don't have it, then you don't buy it. That's our policy. We have food in our house and we have clothes to wear. And so if we want something else, and guess what? I need so many things. You wouldn't believe all the things that I need. I need... I don't know why. I need a new vehicle. I need a new tractor. I need a new this. I need a new that. And I need a new house. I don't know. My wife needs a new house. Oh no. We don't need those things. We want those things. So we save money. And if we don't have the money for a new vehicle, we don't buy it. 
If I don't have the money for a new tractor, I don't buy it. Now, the last one. Spending money on needs versus buying things you don't need. Okay, and there, that's, not, that's second to the last. Um, uh, most of the time, you know what? Right now, I've got a tractor for sale. I've got a lawnmower for sale. I've got a little mower that goes on the back of your, a little finish mower on the back of your tractor is for sale. And I've got a little sickle bar and it's for sale. We have all this stuff for sale because I don't need it. Do you know why? Why did I have it? Sometime I thought I needed it, so I bought it. And now I figured out, I don't need it. Duh. If I would have thought about that back there, Today, I wouldn't have to have it for sale. Make sense? Sure. Knowing money won't make you happy versus believing you can't be happy without it. I thought that I could be happy without this lawnmower or without this. That was my wife. There we go. My wife needed that lawnmower to mow the yard. Um, you know. For me, I could have brush hogged it, or I got a brush hog, that would have worked. Or maybe we had some calves, we could turn the calves out in, that would have been eat better. Yep, it ate the grass, and then it kept the yard mode. I mean, excellent idea. <clears throat> maybe we got in the flower beds, though, maybe. I don't know what all, my wife didn't think it was a good idea. So, on second thought, maybe we needed a lawnmower. And the next one is, you know, that tractor, I didn't need that tractor. I thought I did, so I bought it, but now today I don't need it. Uh, that uh, sickle bar. <laughs> Yeah, I don't need that either. You get the point? Buying, believing that it will make you happy, and neither one, none of those things made us happy, so now we're selling them. Yeah, the difference between needs and wants is simply an attitude. Now, that's about all for that sermon. Turn the page. Your circle the answer and sentence ending with fits how you would respond. Okay, answers are going to vary here. Okay? So we start number one, your coat was new last year and fits you well, but when a school friend walks in your classroom wearing a coat you saw at the store and really liked it, you do one A, B, C. You do that exercise. Um, don't, don't, don't tell me your answers, okay? Please don't tell me answers. You just circle the ones, you do all five of them, and then you turn the page. And you look at the next page. And then, now please don't look at your answers. Don't look at the next page until you do these five. And then it says, look at your answers. How well do you recognize your needs and wants? Okay, try to be a little realistic here. Uh, try to do the way you would want to do, okay? And so there's no bad score. There's no right or wrong. Um, and you check out then to see which one you did. Now, number six is where your work is actually going to start. Okay, the first part's just for fun, and there's no right or wrong. Number six, you will choose whether he had a good attitude or a poor attitude. So you read those questions. Uh, numbers nine has got a little bit. Answers again will vary. Um, I guess number eight would do the same thing. Um, will you respond with a smile or a good attitude? How will you do that? And you give me um, give me some good answers. We will check those. Uh, don't 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 skip out. Number ten and eleven again. Are, are pretty easy. Um, this is not a hard lesson, okay? This is a fun lesson. And, and so um, it's just a practical life. And if you were here, I would, I would love to have a, another 15 minute discussion with you of what your needs and wants, how to spend money, how not to. Um, let me tell you, I got one more little bit of advice. This little bit of advice is not good advice for most uh, eighth graders don't like this advice they don't like them but let me tell you what god has given you someone matter of fact two people that are involved in your life that have lots of wisdom two people that you live with very very closely and these two people can tell you what your needs and your wants are pretty good. And what they tell you is what you need to learn from them. 
you need to listen to them. Have you figured out who these two people are? Yeah, you're right. One's a man and the other's a woman. You're right. You're right. And you will, you will always receive a blessing by listening to them. And you know what? I am 50 years old. I still do that too. I have those two people in my life that I still listen to. I have a few more too that I need to listen to. But let me tell you, the Bible says, honor, honor. The fourth commandment, honor thy father and thy mother. May you do that. That's my blessing on you.